Lip Smack and Campin' is brought to you by MSR Stoves and Cookware, makers of the legendary Whisper Light Stove and the award-winning Reactor Stove System. MSR has been fueling outdoor adventure for over 40 years. Hi, I'm Tim Connors. I'm Christine. Welcome to another installment of Lip Smack and Campin'. Today we're going to talk about coffee and the different ways you can make coffee on the trail. We're going to start out by describing um, the more common methods of preparing coffee. And, and of course, and we've all done it, we've prepared freeze-dried coffee on the trail. What, what do you, what's your opinion on freeze-dried It's nasty. It's nasty. It's nasty. Yeah, but it's easy. It's easy. It is easy. Yeah. It's nasty. I mean, let's face it, if, if this stuff were good, there wouldn't be coffee shops, right? So, <laughs> Christine and I used to use the coffee packs, and, and it's harder to find these, becoming increasingly hard to find. They're not bad. Coffee singles. Um, they're, they're like a tea bag. You like just a tea bag, yeah. Water and, yeah. And so, so they have they have freeze dried in the bag and then they have regular coffee grinds. These are actually better than the freeze dried. Yes, yeah, so it makes a Given it the makes a decent of the cup two, of coffee. I would go with that one. A relatively new entry on the market is the ready brew coffee, and this is a form of instant. Um, Starbucks was the one that started it. There are a number of different knockoffs these days, and this is actually a pretty tasty um, option. Uh, it, it can be a little pricey, especially if you're um, a heavy coffee drinker. Which Tim is. Christine's not, of course. She <laughs> practices moderation, but I'm not able to. MSR makes the Mug Mate, which is useful not only for brewing coffee, but for brewing tea. But you can uh, use this for brewing grind coffee. So you bring that from home. And the rule of thumb is to use two rounded tablespoons parade down serving a coffee. But we'll go ahead, set that down, pour the boiling water right into the mug mate, put the lid on, and we'll let that steep for about five minutes, and that'll give us a really nice cup of coffee. One of the new entries in the coffee preparation arena is the coffee press, and uh, they, this is um, a really neat addition to the cook system from MSR. It's really easy, easy to use, very lightweight, the coffee press itself weighs about two ounces and it packs flat. And there's two var variations that MSR sells. One is for the reactor system, which I have here. It's 1.7 liter pot. They also make a unit for the um, Trailite Duo. So we have our boiled water. I'm going to go ahead and convert our lid into the press. Half a cup of grinds. We will pour that directly into the water. We'll set that lid back on with the press and we'll watch the clock. We'll take it about three minutes. So we pressed our coffee in the reactor and the lid has a hole inside. It's called a strainer lid. It has a hole in it so that you can use it to pour. Good. Is it? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Maybe about four more, four to eight more tablespoons of coffee. <laughs> to get the... All right, finally, we're going to demonstrate cowboy coffee, which is perhaps the most flexible form of uh, coffee making for camp or trail. It's, it's a great method because you can make just a couple cups of coffee using the technique or you can make coffee for an, an army of people depending on how, how large your your cook pot is and the number of people that you have and we use the same formula here's our coffee grinds where you bring about about half a cup of grinds for about a quart of coffee with cowboy coffee you always start with cold water and you go ahead and just float your grinds right on the cold water so as we bring the water to a boil, we'll note that as the water warms up, the coffee will, will form into a mat, and it becomes actually pretty stiff. It's all wet, it becomes flat, you don't see any more of the dry grinds.
And what we'll wait for is for the boiling water to break through the mat and begin to curl that under. And uh, that's, that's our sign that we're ready to take the, the coffee off of the, the flames and to have it cool down. You need to give the coffee a, a minute or two for the grinds to settle. And one way to help it along is to splash a bit of cold water on top of the brew. Not so much that you, you know, cause your, your coffee to get cold. It doesn't take much, but it does help sort of shock the top layer. When serving the coffee, what you don't want to do is just take your mug and, and scoop it into the pot. Otherwise, you're going to end up with obviously a cup full of grinds. But uh, they certainly aren't bad. But if you like a very smooth um, coffee without any bits, then you're going to have to be pretty careful as you as you scoop your coffee out. As you work down to the bottom, you'll get more and more grinds, and at that point, at some point, you, you kind of call it a day on, on your pot of coffee. Drain the rest of the liquid out in a, in a responsible manner. You know, just don't throw the grinds out on the gr ground. Mm. Chewy and delicious. Chewy, yeah, you had a couple <laughs> of beans in there. That concludes our episode on how to make great coffee in the backwoods. I hope you'll join us for our next episode of Lip Smack and Campin'. For hundreds of mouthwatering camp recipes and invaluable information for making your next camp trip memorable for all the right reasons, check out Tim and Christine Connor's best-selling series of books. For more information or to purchase books, visit lipsmackandcampin.com.